Today on Locked On Red Wings, Detroit strikes the lightning thrice as they gain ground in the wild card race. I'm really proud of that. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ news radio podcast. Well, Scotty's a host over at Locked On Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200, 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Scotty, happy Tuesday. Hope you had a good Easter. If, if you celebrate, hope you didn't get fooled by anything on April Fools. Happy Tigers 4 0. Go yada yada yada. Speed running the uh the platitudes here as we got to get straight into this game because there's a lot to talk about with the win against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Obviously, yes, we skipped on Monday, so there won't be a Panthers breakdown. It's old news. And I guess if we reference it, it'll be in juxtaposition to the Lightning yeah, yeah. game. But Let's get right into the the game against the uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning because the Red Wings beat them four to two. Start April off one and zero, gain ground in the wild card, and complete the season sweep of. Let's be honest, still a very good Tampa Bay Lightning team. So Scotty in a win, a much needed win, especially when we're looking at the results across the league. Who is your difference maker? Well, the, <laughs> you know, my difference maker in this hockey game is Jeff Petrie. <laughs> that is my difference maker. As we all predicted, as we've all thought from the beginning, uh, as you know, I, next year we should keep a tally. We, we should uh, give it and should, take it. Yeah, of like, no, 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 no. We should keep a tally of our difference makers so that at the end of the year we can see, like, who was the difference maker of the year. I don't know. Anyway, Jeff Petrie would not have too many of those, is my point. And I think we absolutely should talk about how, how obviously, the play itself was was the big game-saving play he had with the puck sitting on the line, swinging a miss first time got it the second time and cleared it out of there. Uh, I I think Jeff Petrie is absolutely a difference maker in this hockey game. Yeah. I I won't say anything regarding, let's just think about difference maker, right? It doesn't have to be an overall performance. It can be an individual play. It can be a system. Like what I talked about how in the Carolina loss, it was Carolina style play was a difference maker. The way they play hockey just stifled the Red Wings. Well, in this game, the play that Jeff Petrie made in the third period to keep it a tie, a 2-2 tie to keep the Red Wings in it in a sequence in which the Red Wings were being hemmed in for about three minutes straight as well. I mean, was the biggest play of the game outside of any of the goals the Red Wings scored because as Derek Lalone mentioned a few weeks ago, this is a very fragile hockey team mentally. And for every goal they score, they get on that high and every goal against, they get on that low. A goal against to go down 3-2 to two after you've had two separate leads in the third period in particular, if you give up that goal against, that might break this hockey team. There's no mm-hmm. coming back from that, especially with how hard you had to fight for every single goal in this hockey game. So Jeff Petrie, even if it's right place, right time, I don't care that he whiffed on the first attempt to clear it off the, off the goal line. That play saved the game and damn near saved the season. So, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see what happens uh, the last, you know, couple of weeks of the year here, but uh, that absolutely could be a play that we all look back on and go, wow, that was, that was Jeff Petrie. Like we want to be as fair as possible. And I know sometimes, and we try to admit it when we have biases, right. And we were really hard on Petrie after the loss of the Carolina hurricanes and deservedly so. Uh, But in this instance, he made a huge play that kept this game tied 2-2. And the Red Wings would eventually go down. Eventually. Emphasis on that word. And uh, get get a grimy rebound goal fighting in front of the net by David Perron to take the lead and eventually seal the deal on a Raymond empty net goal. And it couldn't have happened without that. Uh, But my difference maker in this game uh, is the man who was floundering in front of Jeff Petrie on that play. Alex Lyon. This is his 
third game and fourth game in a row, I would argue he was really good. Uh, he in the last four games, he has a save percentage of 933. I did the math because it's not uploaded uploaded yet. So wow. if it's wrong. That's a pro right there. And if it's wrong, it don't blame. Well, I guess you would blame me. It was my math. That's poor. But 933, 934, if you want to round it up, save percentage in the last four games. He's been absolutely stellar. Finally gets a win. Like, finally gets a win to to prove on the record sheet that he's back because the last four games that he's played has been an OT loss to the Capitals, an OT loss to the Panthers, and a one to nothing loss to the Predators. All good game. Well, yeah, all good games yeah. uh, for the Detroit Red Wings as well that they couldn't pull out for Alex Lyon. They couldn't score enough goals to support him. And then this time they do. And he makes 34 saves in this game for a 944 save percentage individual in this game independently. And then a, a 1.06 goal saved above expected as well. So he balled out. And I mean, the conversation has to be had. He was, he, February, he wasn't great. He was starting to come down from his high. March, he was atrocious for the most part. But at the end of March, despite the L's on his stat sheet, he was playing better. Is Alex Lyon back? I'm thinking he is. Yeah. I, I, I think given his last, whatever it is, three, four, five outings, four, he's yeah. certainly. Uh, you can classify him as that. And, and you know, the, the team really never wavered too hard. There, I guess there was a little bit of that stretch there in the middle of March where they were going to Reimer because Reimer was in the net when they were getting wins. So they went to him for a few games there, uh, I guess a little bit more frequently than they had earlier in the season. But, yeah, man, I, I mean, Lyon absolutely has been stellar. And you've been <laughs> very uh, – you and I – have been talking off air a lot about how, you know, it just seems it's really unfortunate that he's probably not even probably has been better than Reimer, you know, in the last, in his last three or four outings, it's just the team can't win in front of him. Uh, so it's nice to see him get rewarded just personally, but yeah, man, he was absolutely stellar again in this game. And hopefully we can keep that momentum going for the last two weeks of the season here. I'm pretty sure we mentioned it on the air as well. I'm sure we <laughs> and have, had a couple yeah. points too. No, he was he was absolutely fantastic. And I mean, we we got to difference makers early because we have a lot to get to, so we can move right into our notable performances, people who contributed to this huge win over the Tampa Bay Lightning to complete the season sweep. Um, of note, I guess not notable players, but of note in general. With the win, the Detroit Red Wings have surpassed their point total from last season. They're at now 82 points which would also lock them into no worse than a 500 points percentage on the season. So it'll be the first time they are a 500 or better hockey team since 2016. So I know it's been very hard to be positive about this hockey team after the three win month of the Tigers and the Red Wings had the same amount of wins in the month of March. That's crazy. The Tigers played three games in March and won them all. And the Red Wings had 10. Or 12 or something like that, and only won three. Um, but I know so I know it's really hard to be positive about this team after the month of March they had. But on a bigger picture scale, it is important to note that this is what since 2020, 2020, 21, 22, 23, 24. Did I do that? Zero, what 2020, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yeah, the fifth straight year that they have since 2020 have been improving in the standing. So fourth straight year, they've improved upon the 2020 season and, and the year prior before that and that and that. So it's, it's great to see the Red Wings just continue to take steps forward, even if right now it's hard to see that. No. Yeah. That's a, that, I think a really important point is they have improved each of the last four years uh, and that's official. And I, I'm not even going to talk about the remainder of the season. I was going to say something. I'm not even going to talk about the the schedule remaining. We're not gonna we're not gonna jinx anything here. But yeah, I, I think that uh, that is important to note, just because you know going into the season, we and your expectations can change mid year. But going into the year, we were just wanted be on the fringe, fighting for a playoff spot in April, and that is what we're getting. And they have guaranteed improved from the previous season so uh it, it can be hard to see kind of in the heat of the moment especially with how bad march was and i'm not trying to play apologist they completely blew it and your expectations do change when you have an eight point cushion on wild card one with a month left in the season that's a, that's a fair absolutely fair point but uh big picture uh, i think from the start of the year yeah it's good to see good to see that for sure yeah so 
Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we will talk about uh, notable performances on the ice as well and probably lead it off talking about the return of Jake Wallman. So stay tuned for segment two of Locked on Red Wings. Got to talk to you guys today about FanDuel. The sports calendar is loaded. It is April in the D. The Tigers won, the Wings won, the Pistons played, and FanDuel is making it even more exciting to get on the action because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 you can use to bet the tourney, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Jake Wallman, that was the big news before the game began to get played, uh, returned in this hockey game after missing, I, I don't know, five or six. I didn't do the math. Oli Mata sat, which I know caused a stir on social media because, I mean, even I, after the Hurricanes game, I was so heated, I called for Petrie to be sat. But then the conversation was, okay, well, that's the right side. Your depth on the right side is kind of crap, but I mean, at some point, you got to make a decision on sitting sitting Petrie after a game like that, and even if it means eating a Justin Hole game for a day. Well, so when P the news came out that Olimata was being benched and not Jeff Petrie, people were upset, but I think they were looking at it, and, and this isn't anything to do with Wallman. We'll talk about Wallman's performance in this game, but it's as simple as Mata plays left and Petrie plays right, and that's why Mata got sat. You have a lot more options at left than you do at right right now, and I know some people are saying, well, players should be able to play both, or Schrotten, Gosses Bear can play both. It's like, yeah, but they, and Gosses Bear already does play right right now, playing with Mata or with Wallman like he did in this game, but Sherratt is so much better on the left side. He's been playing so good with Cider. If you want to make an argument that Petrie should have been sat for Hole, sure, why not? I I'm, I, I won't disagree with you. I was kind of advocating it for it two games ago, but yeah. I think the I think the Mata versus Petrie thing was a little bit disingenuous. I guess is yeah, maybe just overblown a little bit. Blown. Yeah, I, I think that uh, <clears throat> again we we've been talking about wanting to shake up and change the blue line for a month and a half now. So sure, uh, got it not, right. Uh, I'm not gonna not gonna find. Uh, you know, not going to look at people and say like, "Hey, you know, you're overreacting or whatever." No, certainly not because we we've been talking about the same thing, but, uh, yeah, it, you know, when it, it, I am interested in the remainder of the season, how much time Wallman gets, right. I mean, he only got what, 12 minutes of, of ice time tonight. Like, I mean, yeah, he's playing it, third I, ghost. Yeah. So I'm interested in seeing how he's going to be utilized. And the thing that has been so important and, and will be so important to the divvying up of those minutes. And they don't have to just immediately, throw him back on the top pair and make him play 22 minutes if he's not ready to is because Sherratt and Sider have been playing so well together and uh, certainly better than expectations, I guess, uh, at, at a minimum. So uh, it's just so funny. Like when they, when he first got Sherratt, that was the pair and and it was terrible. And then now, you know, a season and a half later, now we're back and, and we're like, Hey, it's actually pretty good. So I am interested in how they're going to utilize Wallman the rest of the way and if it's going to kind of be a slow mix back into things. Wallman's very versatile. He can play with a lot of different defensemen as well. We talked about that a lot last season when he was playing with like every defenseman on the team. So um, that's something to keep an eye on for sure. But uh, yeah, as far as this game goes, again, obviously Petrie made a great play as well. Um, but I, I do think that it's a lot more uh, ready lefty than really anything else. Well, and also, like, if you look at any of the defensemen, Ole Mata, if you're going to sit one on the left side, Ole Mata is the only one that makes sense. Yeah, one, because correct. that's the that's the pair that gets sheltered the most. So inserting Jake Wolman into the lineup gives you a lot more versatility. Now, Wolman and Gosses Bear have a huge <laughs> boomer bust quality to them. They're both, you know, Wolman's definitely more two way than Gossis Bear, but he definitely leans more sure. offensive-minded. We saw him struggle in the defensive zone on the first pair. So I was thinking for a while that maybe, you know, long-term, he moves down to the second pair and you get an actual, diff, you know, partner for Sider. That's a different conversation. So when Sherratt in Wolman's ab absence stepped up so large, I was like, this is actually huge for the Red Wings because yeah. with the call-up of Edvinson, and if when Wolman gets healthy, you have, like, 
tools on the left side. Now your right side's still really shallow, but you saw it in this game. Like we've gotten the shakeup we kind of wanted. Now Petrie's still on the ice and he saved a huge goal in this one, right? But uh, you know, you have Sherat and Cider who and Cider, we'll talk about him. He was fantastic in this hockey game, uh, like 25 minutes, which is what we've been wanting in eight block shots. But you know, Woolman on the third pair gives that third pair a little bit more versatility. Maybe you don't have to shelter them as much. I don't know. Gossip is still out there and he's like the main reason you got to shelter him. So I have no qualms with Olimata getting, you know, sitting here, especially because of the lefty righty matchup. Overall, though, I wasn't super impressed with Wallman's and Gossip Bears performance in this hockey game. I thought Wallman, uh, I, you know, they he had a really good opportunity early. I thought in the offensive zone, they had a couple really good looks. I'm not sure if this is just them working out the kinks of a pair or if them just not being incompatible. We're going to have to see more, in, you know, given the fact that they won and let alone having a penchant for running it back, so to speak. We probably will see more of that pair, especially because Petrie and Edvinson are kind of finding the groove. Sherratt and Sider have been great together. Uh, but they left a lot to be desired as well, but I'm willing to give it more time because Woolman's still clearly sick. They said the flu's kind of run its gambit. Yeah. But if you listen to the the availability earlier in the day, you, you see that thumbs up. Did it did you, thumbs up? I did. Yeah. I guess you did I a thumbs up. A thumbs up it, there. <laughs> <laughs> I Scotty liked my comment, but if you listen to Woolman <laughs> earlier in the day, uh, he clearly sounded sick. Like very notably, was very sounded very congested. We know he's been battling injury. So I, I'm willing to give it more time. I'm not going to hit the panic button yet. Um, other than that, who you got, Scotty? Who's next? We got a whole list. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, and and I I think that pair just in general is an interesting uh, blend of styles, as you kind of alluded to, right? And I think you, I don't know. Ideally, you probably want someone who's. Uh, I, I guess I go back and forth. We'll see how Wallman looks. We'll see how how he continues to progress, like we talked about. Um, I, I mean, I, I do want to talk about Edvinson. Uh, as you you mentioned off air before, he had one pretty rough play uh, in this third. game. But besides that, I, I think we both were pretty impressed with how he looked, and there he had a, a few really nice plays as the game went along, as well. I think in the second period specifically, uh, I, I he had a really really nice shift toward the end. Yeah, I, I, again, you should keep him in the lineup. <laughs> We've been harping on it for a while, but it's, yeah, keep keep Edvinson out there, please. Yeah, please and thank you, much appreciated. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought it, it's really his reach, right? Like that's been the big difference yeah. maker. Obviously, he's physical. His positioning's been pretty good. He made one bad pinch in the third period, but on the penalty kill, especially, I know Steven Samkos inevitably scored on one of their power plays. But his reach has been incredible uh, on the back end. He's been, we've talked about it. He'll get pinned up against the boards and he'll reach and he'll keep it towards him despite the fact getting pinned. Then he'll also, he'll get uh, break up passes through the seam by just poking it away because of his reach. Like that reach is incredible. And it also helps with his puck possession, skating up the ice. These are things we've known, right? Like we've known all of these things about Simon Edmondson but they're really showing themselves now that he has kind of grown into his size and matured as a player. Like he's looking comfortable. And that's the reason, like Jay, I was a little nervous. I was like, well, if Jake Wellman gets healthy, are they just going to send him back down? But like, no, like Jake Wellman's Jake Wellman's back. And Edvinson's still in the lineup. That means he's earned his spot on the roster. Seven games left, right? That's all we got left after this one, seven games left. And he's here to stay. Now yeah. what happens if they make the playoffs? He's here. Obviously if they, they lose, they're sending him back to grand Rapids to play in their playoff race. Well, my expectation is starting next season. He's he's full time Red Wing. Yeah, I would agree with that. So uh, we have a got to get another quick break, Scott. We got to speed up these conversations, man. We could go on and on about all these guys, but stay tuned to segment three of Lockdown Red Wings. We'll we'll, we'll continue the conversation. Season's wrapping up, but regardless of where the Red Wings are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is the number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Patrick Kane, Robbie Fabry, Lucas Raymond or David Perron record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, or more in a given game. 200 times bet on sleeper. You need to constantly 
correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Red Wings fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code Lockdown NHL and you'll get up to $100 match on your first de- deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Lockdown NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Segment three, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Uh, Scott, we've got a lot more to get to. Let's talk about the positives before we talk about that abysmal power play. Obviously, I, I kind of hinted at more at Cider, right? Cider was great in this game. He blocked eight shots. He played 25 total minutes, which thank you, Derek. This is what I've been asking for you, of you for a while. And finally, down the stretch, you're starting to give our boy, Mort Cider, the ice time that he deserves. And look what it gets you. A 4-2 win over the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, he cleared his defensive partner, Ben Sherratt, by four minutes in this hockey game. They were really leaning on Moritz Sider. And in the defensive zone, again, toughest matchups, playing against Nikita Kucherov nonstop. He crushed it. He was so good in this hockey game. And, I mean, he... he Regression my ass. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> way to uh, way to stand down brother heck yeah um yeah no I, he, he was great in this one and again we've been talking about it for we i've already talked about it a little bit in segment two but we've been bringing it up not only the the ice time but also again just the fact that him and Sherrod have been playing well together uh certainly helps this whole situation a lot and i hope that he continues to lead the entire team in ice time yeah, I mean, Nikita Kucherov in this hockey game played 15 minutes and 37 seconds at uh, five on five. And Sider was out there for over 10 minutes of it with him. Yeah. And with Moritz Sider on the ice, Nikita Kucherov's Corsi four percentage at five on five was 42%. When he was off the ice, it was 75%. So Sider had a huge impact on Nikita Kucherov. So he's doing that playing against Kucherov, Kucherov playing mostly defensive zone minutes, 25 minutes a night, eight block shots. I mean, he, he he's a killer. He's an absolute killer. I love Moritz Sider. And Ben Chirot, credit to him. I know that Sider obviously cleared him by four minutes on time on the ice. That pair has been looking good. Like, I can keep them rolling together. And plus, like I said, that just gives you more, that just gives you more flexibility down the, down the lineup. So, Moritz Sider, sure. all the credit to you, man. Uh, what else you got, Scotty? Um, I mean, we can talk power play if you want. Sure. It sucked. It was not good. <laughs> It was really not good, honestly. Uh, I, I think that there's a few more ways we could describe it. Um, yeah, man, it was really not great, really stagnant, really poor passing. Just all in all, opportunities it, just in a whole were few and far between. Nonetheless, you know, like real shots on net and goal scoring chances. Yeah, this power play has been an issue for a while. Like, they'll get a power play goal here and there, like Fabry scored on the power play against the Cats, right? Um, but... Overall, it's kind of struggled, it, obviously, overtime against the Cats, right? No excuse to not win the game on a 4-3 and three overtime, uh, overtime power play. Like, ridiculous. And in this one, you gave up what was the first Sorelli no goal on the power play, the one where he crashed in a lion and they had to review it? Yeah. Was that on the power play? Because I know the second one Ooh, where it's... Um, I don't remember. I, I know I don't know about the first one. I know that for sure the second one where yeah. it clearly was in the net, but because they didn't have video evidence of it being in the net, they couldn't just it was a good call by the refs by the letter of the book. But yeah. let's be honest, that puck crossed the line. It should have been a goal. Sure. Uh, but it was a good by the books, no goal on that call by uh the refs on upon review, but it was two times in a row. The Red Wings defensive breakdown, letting Sorelli in. And they got bailed out by the refs. And then again, Patrick Kane crosses the blue line, gives a bad pass to, I think it was Andrew Kopp. They come back down two to one, two on one or whatever it was. And Sorelli just rifles it past Lyon. And it's like, and that four shorthanded goal, like yeah. how th- their power play has c- clearly been figured out by the rest of the league. At one point, top 10 power play, they've clearly figured out the Red Wings power play and contrasted to the Lightning's power play, which was pass, pass, pass. Like you couldn't, that second power play that they second or third power play the lightning had where Stamco scored the Red Wings could not stop their puck movement. They were just tic tac toe. Like that's what the Red Wings want to be. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And 
again, contrasting the two, the Red Wings power play was just abysmal, but they were able to pull out the win regardless. And I think that's my biggest takeaway from this game. Like it was ugly at points, right? The, those power plays getting hemmed into your own defensive zone, yet the team persevered. And at five on five overall, they hung with them. Like the shot total, final shot total in this game was close. It was 36 shots, lightning, the Red Wings 32. They played close with the Florida Panthers. They played tight with the Washington Capitals. They played tight with the uh, Nashville Predators. Obviously, the Hurricanes game is kind of an outlier in that regard because they couldn't get anything going. That's the Hurricane-style hockey, and Jeff Petrie game happened. But, you know, for the last five games, despite the results, the Red Wings have persevered, and it just has not gone their way. And it almost didn't go their way in this game either. Lucas Raymond had a breakaway. The 2-1-1 on that got broken up and Rasmussen couldn't get everything on. Again, Lucas Raymond. And then, of course, three posts, Cider crossbar, Christian Fisher crossbar from outside the zone. Who was it in the David Perron right after the Red Wings went up, won the nothing. Could have given them insurance, but hit the junction, I think, between the crossbar and the post. Like it looked like another one of those Red Wings losses was in the mix where, where when they were losing seven in a row, they were just getting their doors blown off every game. They've started to turn it around and they've hung in these games and even played up to tougher competition like the Predators, like the Panthers and like the Lightning, but they just were not catching the breaks. Well, finally in the third period, they caught the break with, it wasn't even a break. It was just a beautiful face-off yeah. win by JT Comfer back to Cider, Perron finishing it on the doorstep. Like they made yeah. their own luck in the third period. And that's when, when things aren't going your way, that's what you got to do. So credit to the Red Wings persevering. Uh, in this recent stretch, can't say so much again about the seven game losing streak, but in the recent stretch, Scotty, the, the perseverance has been huge. And if they keep persevering, persevering, it's going to start going their way more often, especially with seven games left and just one point back of the Philadelphia Flyers. Well, yeah, that's, that's the thing is, you know, we're talking about it'll, it'll go their way more often while there's not too much left. There's not too much often left, right? I mean, we're having a, a a bigger picture conversation when there's seven, eight games left in the season. So um, yeah, hopefully though, these are obviously very, very important final two weeks of the year here. Uh, yeah. The Perron finish was great. Fabry shout out Robbie Fabry. Shout um, out JT Comfer actually. Yeah. Well, he had a great game. Comfer I, was the workhorse on that goal. Yeah. He, he busted his butt past a defender down the, sh down the, sh the boards cut to the net. And then when Vasilevsky picked it up, Fabry was just went. He credit again, yeah. I guess credit to Fabry. He crashed the net, which is what he should do. But Comfer did all the work on that. And he had two yeah. assists. In yeah. This Comfer game, had so. two tonight. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, man, now you're, you've again, you're, you're hanging around. <laughs> you're in the conversation. It's April. You, uh, you're, you're playing very meaningful and important hockey. It's, it's stressful. Obviously you should have been higher given where you were going into March, but some really, really big games coming up. Yeah. I mean, you're still in this thing, right? Like, and that's the big thing after the Carolina loss, right? And even after the Panthers loss uh, on Saturday when the Capitals won and they bumped Philly down into second in the wild card, the conversation always was it sucked they lost, but at least the teams they're chasing didn't gain, you know, didn't yeah. separate at all. And I was like on here losing my mind because it's like I'm getting tired of saying, well, at least the teams they're chasing didn't separate because at some point you need to gain ground. If you had won those games, you'd you'd gain ground. Well, even though the Flyers <sighs> Islanders blew it with 10 seconds left. Right. And like we we're at a point. It, it's ridiculous that we have to even depend on other teams. Right. The eight point separation, the way Red Wings had in the wild card. But this is where we're at. Ten, the Islanders had to kill 10 more seconds and it'd be a regulation win. Flyers tied it up. They got a point, but they lost in overtime. The Red Wings won in regulation. They gained ground. And I know that's such a small consolation prize with how much the team has struggled, but that is such an important sign along with the perseverance they've had in the last few games, the improvements on Alex Lyons part, like they are slowly starting to piece it back together. The question just becomes, do they have enough time? Yeah. Is it too little too late or, uh, I, I mean, will again, just you, enough. Your next three games are Rangers, Sabres, and then Caps again. So these next three are going to determine a lot. It's uh, it's going to determine a lot, man, indeed. Also, Patrick Kane, filthy backhand goal. 
He's got 11 points in his last 10 games. What a signing by the Detroit Red Wings. I'm so glad. I'm so lucky Gold I changed my tune in the last time. <laughs> that was he, not human. He didn't even know that was going to go in. He, no, he, yeah. That was a Hail Mary. Well, I don't put anything. In. Maybe he did. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to speak on uh, on the talent of, of Patrick Kane on the ice for sure. I don't know, man. That was wildly impressive. It was great. It was a beautiful goal. And I was like, oh, man, I, I can uh, talk again. Perseverance, right? That was a third time or whatever it was. And how many games are being finished the first period without getting scored on? Like, that's yeah. an improvement. Like, the improvements are there. It's just, is there enough time? Is there enough time to get it right? But at the same time, everyone they're chasing, no, or and, and everyone chasing them, nobody yeah, wants No one wants the last no. spot. So, it's actively everybody's like you take it you take it you take it the red wings well let, literally any team that gets that is going to be falling on their face across the finish line like yeah, that's how they're going to get in so it could be the red wings uh and then we kind of mentioned him lucas raymond had a great game he was driving plays he, he he got rewarded with the empty net goal at the end and it was a much deserved goal he he earned that goal he played great in this hockey game agreed Trying to think, is there anyone else we we, we got to talk about? Or anything that we didn't talk about that we should have? I don't think so, man. I think we hit all our beats, man. Hmm? Joe Valeno, we could talk about. We don't have time to talk about it, but he only played four minutes of five on five hockey. How much did he play overall? Probably just about that. Yeah, only 4.442. Is he sick? Is he on, in the doghouse? Is he Who hurt? Knows Who knows? <laughs> I'm sure somebody talked to asked him in the post game, and I'll, I'll go listen to that as I go to upload this. So, Scotty, any final thoughts? We ball, baby. We ball. Nice to be back in the win column. It's just March nice is to over. Win one. It's just nice, it's to, nice win to win one. one. It's yeah, maybe it's just the month of March, man. It can't hurt us anymore. It can't. It's gone. Red Wings have a winning record in April. Let's go. Be back with a new episode tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. We don't have a game till Friday. What are we going to do? Yeah. Weird week. Weird week. Same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day. Every day.